If your family is in a situation where you're, you're pregnant, you're going to be looking for a place to deliver, you may want to pay special attention to this interview with Nancy Hengelfeld right out here in York, Nebraska. She heads up the OB department for York General Hospital. And again, I'm going to tell you, if you want to talk to people who want to make a difference, that's their core commitment, you're going to find this interview very interesting. Thanks for watching Wild Biz TV. Thanks for joining me here. You're welcome. You know, Nancy, I find this idea, you've been here at this OB department. It's a very special thing, I mean, bringing babies into the world. Very meaningful. And you've been here how long? I've been here for 38 years. <laughs> And I've had experience in the OB department that entire 30 oh, years. Oh, my goodness. Do you think you've accrued a little bit of wisdom about uh, babies and the, the origin of life during that period of time? I, huh? I hope so. Oh, my goodness. And I heard your daughter works on your staff with you? Yes. Um, we were we needed some extra help in our OB department. and Say, so I got somebody at home I can bring in? I did. I, she actually uh, moved back to Stromsburg, where I live, and uh, wow. she works in the OB department with me. I bet that's good. If she were here right now, I bet she would just say it's a thrill to be with my mother in this in this situation. I hope so. It's really it's really a great experience in and I love working with her. I love working with all of my OB staff. Uh, absolutely. And you get to do such important things. We're going to return to that in a second. But, you know, that compassion and that sense of, um, well, nurturing, I guess you could say. Tell me how that manifests itself in your check-in procedures and all that, okay? Okay. Um, when a, an OB, a, a labor patient, is admitted, we... Um, assign one nurse to take care of that patient. One nurse? Right. So now, is that, is that a little bit different than standard procedures? I mean, uh, uh, other places like shifts, you know, people come and go and all that. Yeah. But assigning one person, that would seem to be... It, it's great because it allows the the nurse and the the mother, her husband, the entire family really to develop a relationship. It's like a little team, isn't it? Kind it, of a SWAT it's a, team. It's a little family is <laughs> yeah, what it is. Because we're all going to go through something together here. Right. Yeah, I think right. that's amazing. What about the, uh, you know, you're, you're part of a fairly sophisticated healthcare system out here. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are, are impressed with with uh, the complexity and the sophistication of it. And I know they invest in technology. Tell me a little bit how technology can shape and enhance the whole OB process okay. a little bit. I, I know I was impressed with that. Okay, well, one of, the, one of the things that we have are we have fetal monitors in each of our labor rooms. You know, fetal monitors. Mm -hmm. I think I've seen those on TV. Tell, okay. tell me what that means, really. An electronic fetal monitor is applied, and um, it monitors mom's contractions. Okay. It also monitors the, the baby's heart rate. It, All right. We can determine fetal well-being by watching the monitor. That's amazing. So you know how the mom's doing and you know how the baby's doing right. based on, I don't know, uh, the different graphs and the colors on the little chart and all that kind of stuff, right? right? Like right. I said, I've seen it on TV. Okay, all right. But I'm, it's very emotional when you're right there. It I mean, is. you're watching it carefully and so on, right? Right. And we're very lucky here. We have two portable fetal monitors and that allows mom to get up and move around. <laughs> um, it's just great. You know, I don't... Is that new? Because I don't think of mothers walking around at this stage in the process down to the last... You know, we're on the five-yard line, you right. know, walking around. Uh, uh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It is a good thing. Um, Why? Well, we use it when we're doing Pitocin inductions. Pitocin is a medication that we use to um, stimulate contractions. Okay. It's considered a high-risk medication um, no matter where it's... It's used. Okay, thank and you for saying that. So it's not something that you do with everybody. You don't no, use Pitocin no, with everybody. No, we just use it if it's time for the pregnancy to, to end, if it's time for the baby to be born. We've got to move forward here. Right. Well, right. i, I got to ask you this question. What percentage in general now uh, uh, do you have to do use Pitocin and, or kind of, you know, uh, induce a little bit? 10 or 20 percent or oh, more? Probably maybe around 30 percent. Around 30 percent? Mm -hmm. Okay. I just was curious about that. And it's, that. it's for different reasons. Sometimes it's patient choice. Other times it's um, the need for the baby to be born. Yeah, yeah. It's a medical. For all, the, for all those reasons. And I know that's a complex decision to make. That's not something mm -hmm. that somebody says, all right, well, let's just get on with this. Right, right. Absolutely. Well, tell me a little bit more about the staff. I know that you're, you're a heartfelt, straightforward person. Everybody in New York here seems to have a special, um, oh, I don't know, sense of compassion or sensitivity, maybe is a better word, more professional word for the patient. But, but tell me, how do, you, how do you find and cultivate and recruit people for your staff? Because that's, that's a big thing. I mean, right. uh, and obviously your viewpoint has kind of shaped the culture of the department. 
and the staff's attitude towards people. Tell me about that. Okay, well, I think it takes a special person to want to, to be one-on-one -on -one with a patient for 12, 16 hours. Yeah. But, um, and they, they have to, to like being able to coach. I just recently had a new nurse and she came in and watched one delivery and she came yes. to me afterwards and said, I really want to work in your department. Wow. And I said, that would be great. I think you'd be a, be very good at What that. an easy recruiting process. It just, is. Just sit it here is. and watch it and then tell me what you think, right? Yeah. 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 So can you sense intuitively uh, um, the quality uh, inside of people that, uh, that will help them be really great? Or is it a kind of a linear analysis that we have to check boxes on? No, I think um, they have to have the personality. They mm. have to be compassionate, caring. Um, they have Others to, oriented, kind of focused right, on other people. Right, right. Yeah. Um, putting them first in their day. Yeah. Um, and then I ha think they really have to want to make a difference. Now tell me about that. I mean, it would be profound to me. I would be so emotional every day with all these babies being born around me. When you say make a difference, what are you really referring to? Bring somebody into the world with that intimate moment with the family? Is that kind of what you're talking about? It is. It, it's something that you get to share. It's a privilege. <laughs> Well, Nancy Hengelfeld, I feel like I know what's going on inside of your OB department right <laughs> well, here good. at York, York General. I really enjoy and appreciate you allowing me to kind of step inside of your very important world. Thank, thank you so you. much, and thank you so much for watching us here on Wild Biz TV here in York, Nebraska. I'm Lynn Hinderrocker, and we will see you next time.